Hello everyone and welcome back to Earth and Star Wars. I am Bufar191. This is a fan creation with its own internal continuity. If you're just jumping on, then you're going to be lost. With that said, any visual not related to Star Wars is just that. A visual, nothing more. It's there to help convey a point, and so you're not looking at a black screen. Before I kick this off though, a bit of housekeeping. This is the first part of the series digging into Legends material after episode 6. However, for those wondering, not a lot of what has already been established will be altered. But we have to go back, back before the Battle of Biss. In the original timeline, the Terrans uncovered that Palpatine was hiding clones of himself on Biss. In order to ensure the attack on Endor had the intended outcome, the Outer Republic attacked Biss and obliterated a part of the planet's surface. They destroyed the Emperor's Citadel, as well as wiped out all of Palpatine's clones, ensuring his death on Endor would be final. However, things have changed. As Outer Republic intelligence is digging into the inner workings of the Empire, they come across something odd. In place of the knowledge on Palpatine's clones, the Terrans learn about the Sentinel droids and in turn, Palpatine's contingency plan for the Empire if he was to die. Palpatine's plan called for the destruction of several worlds such as Naboo with Operation Cinder, and the fact that these droids could operate as a head for the Empire worried them. The Terrans did not know the full extent of Palpatine's plans, the destruction of the Empire, so they believed that if the Empire was to lose this head, if these were to be destroyed, the ambitious moths and admirals would turn on one another, and in turn, divide the Empire, creating a power vacuum that they and the rebels could exploit to bring down the tyrannical government once and for all. The Terrans understood that the war would continue in this new form for a long time. They also understood that there was a chance the Empire could keep itself together, resulting in a wasted effort for a large-scale operation. However, the risk was worth the reward. Using the full capability of the Outer Republic intelligence, as well as what remained of their fleet, the Terrans sprang into action. Unlike the Battle of Biss, where the Terrans informed the Rebellion about the clones, the Outer Republic kept the discovery of these droids very close to their chest. For months, they hunted down installations and ships with these droids on them and destroyed them. This strained their relationship with the Rebellion, however, as they wanted aid in destroying the second Death Star, which wouldn't come. One by one, these droids were destroyed, and slowly, the Empire lost its only connection to Palpatine after his death. As the Battle of Endor began, the Terrans assaulted the last installation on their list, the Observatory on Jakku. This location housed not only more Sentinel droids, but ancient Sith knowledge, including holocrons. But more importantly, as the Terrans discovered after the battle, a detailed map of the unknown regions created by Grand Admiral Thrawn. The battle for Jakku, this time around, was fierce but rather brief. The facility was hidden and guarded by the Sentinel droids as well as automated turrets alone. So when the full might of the Terran navy descended upon the world, the paltry garrison was overwhelmed. After destroying every Sentinel droid that the Terrans were aware of, they presented their findings to the Rebellion once the Battle of Endor was over. This mended the gap that had grown between the two allies, but there was still some hesitation. Even within Terran High Command, there had been doubts on whether or not this was the right course of action. If they let the Sentinels carry out their plan, perhaps they could destroy the Empire in one last battle. Perhaps fighting one enemy would be easier than fighting a hundred enemies who all hate each other. However, the debate within the Rebellion and Outer Republic proved to be pointless. What was done was done. However, the last several months of conflict made the Terrans understand something, or at the very least come to a pragmatic conclusion. They were weak, incredibly weak. If the Empire was to descend upon their fleet all at once, then there was a chance, a very high one, that they could lose everything. Zakul was safe, but if the Terrans lost their fleet, then they lost their ability to defend themselves. Beyond this, while thinking back to the Midrim push, as well as the frantic collapse of the Empire into warlords brought on by both of the Allies' actions, the Terrans decided to do something unlike them. 
With the official backing of the Mon Calamari, the Bothans, and several other worlds, the Rebellion was reformed into the Alliance of Free Planets a few days after the Battle of Endor. The Terrans not only offered their support to this new fledgling government, but they also asked to join it to become a full member of this alliance and whatever government would follow. Both the Alliance and Terrans understood the weight of this declaration. Since Earth was discovered so many years ago, the Terrans had been a fiercely independent race. For them to join meant giving up this independence for something more. The Alliance understood this, and for them, as well as the rest of the galaxy, it made the Alliance of Free Planets seem to be a bit more legitimate. For a race who refused to join the Republic, which has been idealized in this time period, for a race who lost it all because they wouldn't submit to the Empire, them joining this alliance showed it had something of worth. The significant moment in galactic history couldn't be celebrated. One day after the Battle of Endor, an Imperial dropship arrived and was intercepted by the Rebel fleet. They learned that the Imperial world of Bakura was under attack by a race that came from the Unknown Regions. Mon Mothma had assembled a small fleet with Luke as its commander, but the new members of the Alliance offered their aid. The Unknown Regions was their home. If they had an unruly neighbor, they would want to deal with it. With five Corellian gunships, one bulk cruiser, 20 X-Wings, the Millennium Falcon, and the entire Terran Navy at his back, Luke led the forces to Bakura. Mom Mothma felt sending the entire Terran Navy was overkill, but Admiral Hackett would have it no other way. The Unknown Regions was filled with threats they could barely comprehend. It's better to send overkill. As the fleet jumped out of hyperspace, they came across a reptilian race known as the CZ Luk. A reptilian race the Terrans jested looked like dinosaurs. After making a truce with the leader of the local Imperial garrison, an action that upset many of the Terrans, the two forces banded together to fight this new threat. The battle was harsh, with Luke almost getting captured by the CZ Rook. But after capturing one of the alien's vessels, this race was forced to retreat. However, the celebration was cut short as the Imperial Garrison Commander attacked the Rebel vessels. Looking for an excuse to kill Imperials, the Terrans saw this opening and tore the Imperial fleet to shreds. Seeing the treacherous actions of the Imperial Commander and the fact the fleet was now debris, Bakura revolted and joined the Alliance. The conflict with the CZ Rook was covered up and later referred to as the Bakura Incident. Both the Alliance and Terrans didn't want this to spread. The galaxy didn't need to panic over nothing. Following this, the Alliance counterattacked by hitting the CZ Rook's home star cluster, but when they arrived, they discovered that it had already been attacked. Later on, the New Republic would learn that this was the doing of the Chiss Ascendancy. One month after the Battle of Endor, the Alliance issued the Declaration of New Republic. The document was signed by Mon Mothma, Leia Organa, Borsk Fela, Admiral Hackett, and Admiral Akbar as well as representatives from Corellia, Duro, Kashyyyk, Sulis, and Elam. After the CZ Rook invasion, as well as the invasion of two other races known as the Nage and the Toph, the galaxy felt that the New Republic had the ability to defend the galaxy. With this in mind, worlds began to support this now legitimate galactic government. However, the New Republic needed a major victory. They still needed to defeat the Empire. They needed to take Coruscant. With the Empire fracturing into warlords and lacking a true head of state, Admiral Akbar decided to isolate these worlds and marginalize the weaker ones, while Mon Mothma rallied more systems to the New Republic. Admiral Hackett split the New Republic fleet into five smaller fleets, with Admiral Hackett leading the fifth fleet made up of solely Terran vessels. Admiral Akbar, he didn't want to test boundaries. With the fleet's given objectives, Admiral Hackett led his forces back to the remains of Earth and then to Empress Tita, a move that surprised many within the New Republic. Its location in the Deep Core, as well as the fact that it was a world that could rival Coruscant, made it a prime target to be taken. Beyond that, the world had a symbolic meaning to both the wider galaxy and the Terrans. Hyperspace explorers from this world discovered Earth, and before the Clone Wars, these two planets were close friends as well as partners. But their separatist leanings, then eventual loyalty to the Empire, created a major divide. Beyond this, this planet was the location of the first victory the Republic and Jedi ever had against the Sith thousands of years ago during the Great Hyperspace War. A victory here would not only aid strategically due to the planet's wealth and location, but it would be a boon for New Republic propaganda. 
This attack had been several decades in the making. During the Clone Wars, the Terrans worried that Separatist loyalists would rise to power through the Mining Guild. Prior to the Galactic Civil War, the Outer Republic New War would eventually be unavoidable. Starting during the Clone Wars, the Terrans slowly started to put sleeper agents inside the Empress Tita system. Not only did they work their way into planetary government positions, but they became top academics, managers of factories, charity operators, leaders in the community. The Terrans worked their way into positions of authority that they could use to influence the attitude of the common man. The rich and powerful on Empress Tita were Imperial loyalists through and through, but the average citizen, those who had to deal with the Empire on a daily basis, could have their minds changed. During the reign of the Empire, the Terrans fostered anti-Imperial sentiment. The academics pulled in Tetan history and talked about the brave sacrifices of the Republic who fought the Sith during the Great Hyperspace War. Others talked about the tragic heroes of Ula Keldroma, while others talked about the evils of the Krath. They spun a pro-Jedi, pro-Republic message within their teachings with enough finesse to avoid scrutiny from the Empire. But these messages had enough power to influence an entire generation to act against the Empire when the time was right. Beyond academics, the Terrans worked their way into positions of communal leadership and inspired as well as riled up those who were on the lower ends of society to action against the Empire when the time was right. Even hyperspace explorers aided in creating upheaval on the planet. Many of them were aliens who became local legends as they amassed riches trading and exploring for the Terrans. Aliens who were second-class citizens in the Empire saw these individuals as heroes, as well as symbols, and over time, they grew to hate those who would see them as slaves. The Tetan government had the least amount of agents, but those who were there became faces for opposition, much like Bail Organa or Leia Organa, or Mon Mothma. When the Empire cracked down though, when these advocates were killed or disappeared, more people did flock to the anti-imperial cause. This was the Terran's magnum opus when it came to galactic conspiracies. For decades, they were able to bring an entire planet, a core world, to the verge of complete insurrection and rebellion. But they were also able to keep them hidden, keep them back, keep the populace calm for decades until they were ready to strike. As the Terran fleet amassed at Earth, Admiral Hackett gave the go-ahead to Imperial intelligence. Within days, the entire planet was in full revolt, billions of people attacking Imperial targets with ruthless efficiency. The sleeper agents organized the attack well. Before jumping to Empress Tita, Admiral Hackett stated he was worried the planet would undergo a total communist revolution. When Hackett and the 5th Fleet finally arrived, all that stood in their way was half of the garrison fleet. The other half had been taken out by rebel Tetan forces, and the capital building with the remaining Imperial ground forces. However, despite the success, the loss of life for the people of Empress Tita was great. Billions were dead, and parts of the planet were leveled. The Imperial forces tried whatever they could to put down the insurrection, but nothing worked. The people's anger was too great. All they were doing was adding fire to the flame. After a series of hard-fought battles, the Terran and the Tetan forces were victorious, with the Terrans being hailed as heroes. All across the galaxy, news spread of the amazing victory at Empress Tita, about the bravery of the civilians who rose up against a corrupt, tyrannical regime, about the tactical brilliance of the Terrans, and how they were able to take the world with comparatively few casualties and about how barbaric the Imperials were for butchering billions of people. To the wider galaxy, it appeared as if the Tetans had enough of the Empire and rose up, and that the New Republic, the Terrans, saw this and quickly lent their aid. However, reality paints a different picture. For decades, the Terrans planted the seeds of revolt and slowly guided it into maturity. They knew there would be the deaths of billions. They knew it would be a bloodbath. And they knew if they liberated the planet, they would be seen as heroes. Nobody would ever learn about the part the Terrans played in the revolt. No one would ever learn about their manipulation. They were heroes, and that was all the galaxy needed to know.